What's the deal? It's Rouge Dog, baby. Check me out on the Bootleg Kev podcast. Bootleg Kev show. Special guest. Gang shit. Back in this motherfucker. Rucci. Yeah, what's the deal? Taco Sun is here. Welcome, my friend. What's happening? I'd like to uh, just give you some appreciation for the fact that you've brought a bong 100% of the times you've come on the show. Yeah, I don't go nowhere without my bong. I promise you, nowhere. Like I like that because, it. you know, when I was a little kid... My dad would only smoke out of a bong, mm-hmm. and I was like little, and I always thought it was called a bomb. A bomb. <laughs> and um, I remember like telling my friends at school when I was like in kindergarten or first grade, like, "Yeah, my dad he smokes out of a bomb," and uh, I, he, some someone told the teacher that shit. Ah. Uh. And then my my they they pull my my parents into the uh, principal's office and uh, yeah, it was over a bong. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the bong. What what are you like? Never on the backwoods, never on the, like, are you strictly a bong hitter? What is, I'm going to tell you to get down. So what I do, is I roll a swisher up. Okay. I roll a swisher up and I take pieces off the swisher and just put it in my bong. You got the leaf there. Yeah, that's nice weed in there. Oh, there's so weed in there. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I just roll a swisher up, take pieces off and put it in my bong. I don't know. Like, so you know, like, like, like roaches. Yeah, yeah. Like roaches type so shit. So you, will you put a roach in the. Yeah. I just break a piece off my blunt and put it in there type shit. Wow. I was in, uh. Alabama, like Tuskegee type shit, out there like fucking around. I was broke as a motherfucker, trying to save money and weed. I started smoking chocolate swishers out there, right? Mm. Then I started running out of like money to buy shit, bro. So I used to smoke roaches out of a bong, and got so accustomed to smoking roaches out of a bong. Now I'm that's your thing. Got all this money, and I still do smoke the same roaches. shit. Yeah. You ever like go into a studio session and the ashtray's got a bunch of roaches? Nah, I don't touch nobody oh. else's roaches. I don't touch nobody else's roaches. You never know. I, nah. Like I said, I rolled me up a bun and I break it down and put it in there. Why were you in Tuskegee, Alabama? <laughs> Man, all right. I was um, opening up for their homecoming for Boosie. Oh. Yeah. What year was and this? 20, fuck, like 14, 15, I think. So you were like... Young, yeah, I was. I was probably like like twenty one, twenty. So you were opening up for Boozy in Alabama, yeah, for their homecoming type shit. My uh, my folks had went to uh, Shao Richard. He was going to school out there, and he brought us out there because mm. he was like on the little uh, I guess the uh, what's that shit called? Fresh, like, fresh. By the way, that's fresh out of prison, Boozy. Yeah, that was. I'm coming home, yeah. Boozy. That was. Mm-hmm. I'm crazy, Boozy. That one. Yeah, so are, uh, yeah. yeah, he was on the committee type shit, and he got us. Like to open up for him So we was doing shows out yeah. there Like they parties out there Was it fun? The homies was traveling out there You feel me? It was a vibe bro It was like one of the best experiences I've had Like getting Like three in the morning drunk And go to the gas station You can get chicken and mac and cheese And Yeah it's great I love fire. the south Yeah You know as a west coast guy I was living in Florida I was living in Tampa When Boozy got out of prison and I didn't fully grasp. I, I'd always known, like, I, I guess I had, like, a better grasp of, more than most people on the West Coast. But I didn't really fully understand, like, the hold that Boozy has in certain parts of this country. Yeah, that was that's my favorite rapper, like, when yeah, I was obviously high you guys got a record together. But in terms of, like, you seeing it in Alabama, did mm-hmm. that kind of, were you like, shit, this is different. Well, let me tell you what happened. I was We was the people that was supposed to go up right before him, right? Mm-hmm. So Boosie was, that's when Boosie was just, I'm Boosie, like, he like, I want to go on stage early. We didn't even get to perform. Oh, shit. Yeah, so we was out there really for nothing, not like. Just hanging out, Got did you get a flick with him at least? Nothing. He, I Listen, he was walking, like when they told us to get off stage, Boosie mm-hmm. going to perform, and we was walking on stage, like shit. And they you like, guys no, just kind of passed each other on stage? Passing, and I, and I said something to him, I'm like, man, they not trying to let us perform, because you said you're going on early. Like I said, it's my favorite rapper. He just walked past me. Did you tell him this story when you nah. ended up working with him? Hell no, nah, because now I understand the game. And you I bet. ain't going to lie to you. Like, I can't tell you that. Like, if he was coming to get his bag and get on, that's what he was doing. You feel me? Yeah. And that's what I be on sometimes, too. You feel me? So I I probably took it hard back then. But, like, when I seen him, I was just so happy. It was like a full, like full circle type shit. He's one of the few um, artists that... When you meet him, just doesn't disappoint your expectations. Mm-hmm. Of right, who he is. that's what man. That's crazy. That's what we were saying too. Like he came and he brought the vibe, and he mm-hmm. and he thugged it with us. You know what I'm saying? And 
He a real hood nigga Like Hey and back then though He was doing shit To where he was going to clubs He was performing like Two songs And then he'll perform Set it off Cause he knew they like Shut it Start down. fighting yeah. And, yeah And he did that Yep You feel me And I was like What the Bro fuck? when he first got out of prison He was getting stupid money What Dude, he was getting like a hundred twenty five thousand yeah, in the his south. Money and got the fuck on. I never oh get my shit. god! Even before I set it off, they start fighting. I'm like, oh. Yeah, sometimes you will like meet people we grew up loving, and then they'll like disappoint us. You know? Yeah. Or, like, or you'll be like, oh, this is obviously who I was watching on music videos and in the magazines when I was growing up. Yeah, was and I think facade. I was so understanding too. Always like of fucking like rappers, like artists, like. How they are Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying Like Adapting to like Lifestyles like that And I was like I always wanted to be that person You feel me Like I had dreams of like Walking somewhere Like And ignoring all these people That love me Like you know what I'm yeah. saying Like it's not, I don't do it But like you feel me It's hey, rapper I mean, shit Sometimes you get your shit off It's rapper shit You yeah. feel me So yeah Like I said Like when I seen him again I'm like damn Fuck all that other shit man How's uh how's everything going with your pops? Beautiful. You get to go see him and TJ often? Yeah, I just recently took my son out there to meet him. Does your dad uh got any plugs in Hong Kong? Nope. <laughs> nope, but yeah. <laughs> nah, he ain't got no plugs out there. I just hear I heard it's a nice place. I've never been. It's a beautiful place. I heard too. I've never been either. Never been, but I just heard that it's like a, a good uh, they got good food and they got cheap drinks there. Yeah. Yeah. Drinks. I'm DJing in San Diego on Saturday, so I might go check it out. I heard they got good tacos. And nachos. And, you know. <laughs> Nacho Supreme. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? All right, listen, you got the new the new project drop. Yeah. Uh, you've been super active, man. I feel like uh, we just talked before this album came out. You had dropped something else. Yeah, I dropped uh, like, like four mixtapes. Yeah, you've been on your shit, bro. Like... Um, is that like, do you do that shit on purpose? Because, you know, sometimes I feel like artists, they make the mistake of doing the opposite of that. They'll drop, they'll get a buzz, and then they overthink the next thing, and then people don't care anymore when they drop new shit. Shout out to G Perico and Mozzie. Like, I'll be just listening to them. And they know. You're in a position where you... G always tell me drop. G don't, like, you feel me? Like, the flood shit, like, I really, like, was paying attention to G and listening to G. He called me all the time and be like, Bro, like he just called me three days ago. He like, album good, doing what it's supposed to do. Drop again. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you're oh, in yeah. a position where you can do that. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, shout out to Empire. Oh my gosh, shout out to Empire. Everybody, <laughs> is this narrative out there that Ruchi could do whatever he want to do with Empire, bro? Like I've been doing interviews and they say, yeah, I heard you could do whatever you want to do at Empire. Like I just think that. When you sign to a label, it's it's on you, bro. Either you hot or you fucking not, bro. Yeah, sometimes people sign and then they stop working because they think, <laughs> all right, cool, I signed. Now they're going to do all the work and I got the music together. It's like, nah, and when you sign, you got to turn up your work ethic. Bro, gas up, bro. Yeah. Be in their face, bro, and that's all it's about, and that's all I've been doing. Yeah. That's crazy because the first record I ever heard from you, uh, the homie Salas had played me the- uh, Oh, Salas. The Lean Like a Cholo remake. Mm-hmm. And I just, that was just trying to cater to What was to that, me. like four years ago? hmm That's when I was really trying to cater to all my Hispanic fans. Like, that's where it's at type shit. Yeah, that was a, uh, is that even like on DSPs? I don't know. Like, could I go on Spotify? Hey, Lean Like Cholo on DSPs? Out of there? Uh, yeah. Great record. Did you ever yeah. talk to Down, a.k.a. Kilo? Yeah, they, what they was on, they was on something, remember? He was oh, yeah. cool though? Yeah. Down AKA Kilo? Yeah, that's crazy. They like, it's crazy when I did it, I'm like, I didn't really give a fuck. I'm just like, I'm about to just put it out. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? When it hit me up, I'm like, oh, damn, it was fast though. Like, and I wasn't even that hot at that moment. Right, so right, it hit right. me up no, fast. No, it was pretty early. Hit me up fast. And I'm like, oh shit, okay, shit, getting, getting out there type shit. Have you noticed like now that you're a lot bigger? You can't do certain things that you maybe could do three or four years ago when it comes to just letting shit fly or samples or just at features. Like, yeah. And yeah. Hell yeah. You got to value yourself. Mm. You feel me? Even with shows. Like, I don't want to do all these shows and just be everywhere. Like, you know, I want to make myself exclusive. Wanted. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I want people to actually like not be used to seeing a Ru- big Rucci show all the time. I ain't really did no shows in LA at all. Yeah, I feel like the Roxy was the last. Nah, was... like hell no, nah, like probably. I think after that I did Observatory. The last time I saw you was uh, I saw you at when you were at uh before the pandemic at Day in Vegas. Yeah, Day in Vegas. And that, that was, was one of dope. my worst shows ever. But that was just a cool moment because I want to say it was you. Was it One Take J? Yeah, Chike. Yeah, it was just a cool moment because it, it was really like a yeah, them my boys a capsule of they, like that was like that. I didn't even like that day. I didn't even go to sleep or nothing. It was like a worst show to me because I couldn't even rap. I was throat fucked up. Voice yeah, gone. that was the first time I ever took a fucking euro. A what? I took a euro. It's like a, a XC pill. Oh, okay, okay. I took it the night before and I never went to sleep. I ended up losing my phone, all type of crazy shit. I had to go on stage that next day. Was it worth it? Yeah. It was fun? Yeah. Hmm. I don't regret shit. I've never done um, any sort of ecstasy. I had Southside from Ecstasy? You ain't never done no ecstasy? I've only eaten shrooms. You ever done Molly? No. What? Weed and shrooms. Nigga, bro, I come from a family of hardcore drug addicts. Man, you doing shrooms, bro. So just no, no, no. Shrooms is fucking, that's fucking from the earth. That's medicine. Try that's, Molly. It's pure. Try Molly? They say it's pure until you end up fucking on TMZ because you overdosed on a fucking fentanyl-laced Molly pill. They're like, yeah, this is good. You got to get the tester, right? That's why I stop popping pills. Because of that. Were you like a pretty, like, were you just like... Recreational with the pill popping, or was it? Nah, like we was popping pills. I'm talking about serious popping pills, perk sex, and everything. No, no, no perk sex. I don't fuck with perks. So, what was your pill of choice? I have tried them. Uh, ecstasy, just regular ecstasy pill. So you're telling me to try ecstasy, and you stopped yourself. I stopped it because, of you, like you said, mm-hmm. but I feel like you should have tried it. Yeah, Southside from 808 Mafia offered me one in the middle of our interview. Shout out to uh, 808. Hey, that's my boy, too. He's, you know what he told me? What? He told me he's going to send me a beat. I almost lost my motherfucking mind. But that's because he fuck with the homies from the hood and shit. Like he's the shot. coolest motherfucker. Like, we have the most hilarious wild talk ever. Shout out to bro. For real, shout out to bro. And, like, he's, like, really, really... Uh, <laughs> he pop X? Oh, yeah. That's what's up. Yo, what up, man? We got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our good folks at Blue Chew. That's right. Go to BlueChew.com. Fellas, you know, sometimes you go through some stress. You go through a little anxiety and your dick is not performing maybe how you'd like. It's called ED. A lot of guys go through ED. You could just be old as shit if you're watching this and your dick ain't working like it did when you were like 20. You know what I mean? Well, listen, Blue Chew it is the wave. Uh, how about this? The same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis getting delivered right to your door in a chewable form, indiscreet packaging. And the best part about it is it's all online. Zero awkward visits to the doctor's office. Zero. You go online, you sign up with the promo code bootleg. That's right. Bootleg. When you check out, you will get the first month for free all you got to do is pay $5 in shipping, and you're going to get one month supply of Blue Chew. All right, and you're going to be fucking like you were fucking never fucking before. Your dick's going to... I'm going to assume you're adding at least a quarter of an inch of erection. That shit's going to be rocked up, rocked up and socked up. All right, boys? So what you need to do one more time, go to BlueChew.com and use that promo code BOOTLEG and get your first month for free. BOOTLEG, promo code BOOTLEG. On bluechew.com. Let's get back to the interview. Yeah, he does a lot. That's why I be saying, like, sometimes, like, if you popped it, you, like, you get back in that mode sometimes. Like, he was talking about how he one time, like, uh, he would, he's done ecstasy thinking he was going to fuck a bitch that night. Bro, and, listen. And then didn't, and then ended up jerking jacking off. off into the fucking sun came he up. He said it was a longer jerk. Not quite a better jerk, but a longer jerk. Nah, nigga jacking off multiple times when you, you don't get no pussy. Like, Have you ever jerked off on ecstasy? What, nigga? It'd be nice like when you really think you're going to get some pussy. Or, nigga, just, you just take a pill. Yeah. And you really end up in that bed by yourself. It's all over, it, man. Have you ever taken like a honey pack or a rhino thinking you I took you a honey pack and that shit made my hair hurt the next day. Yeah, they, they yeah. do that for sure. Nah, nah. Rhino, I, I took a rhino when I was young, yeah. like 18. <laughs> you, I, I just did it because. Just because why not? They're yeah. at the gas station, right? This should be good. Yeah, and I did it. That shit was crazy. Did you <laughs> did you do it and then mm-hmm. hook up with a chick? Mm-hmm. Did you feel like fucking 
Yeah, the I difference. Do my thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But it's just like performance enhancing. It's like uh, when Barry Bonds started doing the roids. Like he was already a good baseball player. Yeah, but my dick to go down to like fucking eight in the morning, bro. Hundred percent. Yes. I, the worst I, part is, is the weight you wake up with the yeah. hardest erection ever. Nigga came and pee in a toilet, shoot. <laughs> bro, there's. N- have you ever? Have you ever? You gotta stand. Buddy. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta stand over the toilet, bro. That's real. <laughs> The, pi- the, we, we, the piss boner Baby Bash would call it the piss boner Man bro Yo shout out to Baby Bash Baby Bash would always tell me stories About how he'd wake up in the morning And fuck a chick with his piss boner Baby Bash? <laughs> yeah Damn Hey see I knew all these niggas Be living this brazy ass lifestyle Bro Baby Bash Sugar Sugar Baby Bash what Yeah the that's fuck? my guy man ba- Bash hard. a wild boy That's fire he's, like that. he's got some of the wildest Um we gotta have Baby Bash on the podcast. Fuck, I be th- he's got, he got some- like wild stories. Oh my yeah. god, just especially with like the biggest porn stars ever. The shit he's done, it's like it's crazy. Shout out to Bash, good guy. Do you feel like um, you said when you first came out, you were trying to like really fo- focus and hone in on the Latin crowd? Do you feel like it's possible to do both? Yep. All right, so put it like this. I go to a Shoreline show. I pop out that Shoreline show, right? Mm-hmm. They go crazy. His fans go crazy. You yeah. feel me? That's all that's at Shoreline show. I pop out at a Kalen show. They go crazy. All the black people go crazy. You feel what I'm saying? Well, like you're I, kind of the first artist to really be able to do that, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to master them, but I, I feel like I got it, but I got to master it, bro. I got to give my, my fans something to really love about me type shit. Would you be down to do like the lowrider shows and shit like that? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, those yeah. are fun. I, I don't like that's what I'm saying. I don't be like I, I'm open to a lot of shit, bro. Yeah. What about uh, Mexican artists? Is there any Mexican artists that you <laughs> that you're um, fans of? Jop J O P, you know what that is? Mm-hmm. Name, hey, Jesus. Uh, I forgot his last name. Bro. There's this dude from uh, Houston that's called like, fuck, what's that dude's name from Houston? My my grandma want me to work with the biggest though. Who like Vicente Romeo Fernandez? and shit like that? Oh, Romeo San- like Santos. She want me to work with Bad Baby and stuff like that. Bad Baby is a female who Bad made Bunny. Bad Bunny I'm twenty sure. million dollars on OnlyFans. Bad ba- Bad Bunny is who you mean? Yes. She made a lot of money on OnlyFans. God, that damn. tells you what kind of creepy motherfuckers is out here, bruh. Like if you spent money to subscribe to a seventeen year old's OnlyFans account, that's brazy. You're fucking a sick fuck. Shout out to her though. Shout out to her. Shout out to Run her. it up. Yo, thank and her man. music wasn't as bad as people uh, I think never it heard was. her music. It she, wasn't terrible. She, I didn't even know she had music. She had out. a song with Kodak Black that was solid. On oh, God? Yeah. I'm going to listen to that. I mean, it wasn't great, but it wasn't like... I fuck with Kodak, though, so I'm... It's I'm better than like a Little Pump song, for sure, you know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even listen to Little Pump, though. I mean, who does anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it's 2022. <laughs> it's been a while since it's been a while since anyone's listened to a little pup song. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice kid though. You know, shout out to him. Uh, what do you listen to though? Like, if if I were to get in your car, we're driving on a fucking road trip. What am I hearing in the car, man? To be honest, Bone Thugs, fucking Kodak, um, Hot Boys. I'm real like like uh, like Hot Boys, like Lil Wayne, BG. Yeah. Um, mm. Boosie What about uh? So Bone Thugs What is your go to Bone Thugs project He's 1999 That's the one Or creep it For me it's creeping on a creeping come up Creeping on a come up part two But I think he's 99 Like I just creeping. Even that, that intro bro Yeah creeping on a come up Just changed my life as a kid So mm-hmm. I have like um. There's two albums that I have that feeling with It's that and Doggy Style Mm-hmm. So creeping on a come up for me will just always forever be like a moment in my life where like things change for me. Or Nipsey too. I played a lot of Nipsey too. Of course. I think that the marathon changed my life. I can see that. I was young. I was in high school at that point. I had dropped out and everything, and it was I was listening to Nipsey. I was. Were, were you scared? Uh, well, I mean, I first discovered Bone when I was like six. Mm-hmm. So all the Ouija shit, I thought that shit was real. Yeah. Um, so shit had me spook low key. My mom wouldn't like that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like she, but I didn't, like it's crazy because I didn't even, I was so much of a fan of them. Like that shit was nothing to me. Like, oh, I love Bone, bro. It was I had like, all the Bone solo shit. I had, yeah. I had fucking when Crazy Bone dropped Thug Mentality, when Busy Bone dropped uh, uh, Heaven Sent. Burner and all that. El Burner, the Lazy Bone. Man. And then shit got hairy because then they like really 
everyone kind of went their separate ways for a while and you could tell they all kind of needed money and then mm-hmm. like busy bone started dropping like full projects with high power records and um it, it, it shit got hairy with the bone yeah. shit for a while there for sure um but shout out to Bone. Yeah, shout out to Bone. You, was, uh, you know who else used to freak me out? Um, did you ever listen to Brother Lynch Hung? Yeah. Like Bro, Season of the Sickness. The thing about him, too, he had to, like, he one who had my mind thinking different, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't listen to a lot of them, but when I did hear him, it was like, damn. Like, Bro, he had an album called Season of the Sickness, and I used to listen to that shit. I used to borrow my friend Ramses' CD. It was a tape, maybe, and... He's talking about eating babies. Oh, yeah. Guess what daddy's bringing home for supper? Nuts and guts and slabs of human meat, motherfucker. Now yeah, I, eat. Nah, I was not. like, bruh. <laughs> and I believed that shit. But this shit was so hard. So you got me off these little fucking shrooms and shit. You talking about eating babies. Bro, that's what Brother Lynch was known for. He was like kind of like a pioneer in what they used to call horrorcore rap. You don't even know how I just imagined like a baby right here, bro. That's bro, he talked about feeding his baby human, human, fe- like, bro, next people. subject, bro. What the Brother fuck? Lynch, bro, season of the sickness. Shout out to him, bro. But yeah, that nigga Sacramento crazy. legend. Sacramento that nigga legend. Is crazy. Crazy guy. For sure. For sure, man. Um, what about like on just like, uh, are you, do you have any aspirations to like sign artists, yep. to be an executive? Um, I'm going to start my, uh, on record label called Doggy Bone Records. I love it. Yeah. And I don't want to um, deal with no, like, rappers, though. I mean, if I'm not saying, like, I would never sign a rapper or anything like that, but I want to do something different, bro. I, I'm in love with, like, 90s R&B, mm. the groups, shit like that. Yeah, there's no more R&B groups. I always say this. Like, what happened to the R&B group? Mm-hmm. Lost art form. No more one twelves, no more jagged edges. Yeah, or even like that, and like escape and shit like that. Escape, yeah. all that shit is like. So yeah, I want to do something like that, or I want to do some country shit too. Do you like country? Yeah, nice. Fuck with it. What's your go to? Like, who do you like? What's your country shit? I think like the cliche shit. I just love Tim McGraw how he was like was, and then um, I got a, a friend named Willie Jones too from Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like. I just be like clinging on like to random like country shit too. Yeah, you uh Tim McGraw had a song that was uh Live Like I Was Dying. Yeah. You know that song? I It's like such a beautifully written song. I was like I about to say that like I can't even explain like how that song is. Written. It's like him essentially singing from the perspective of someone who just found out that they have like stage 4 cancer and like how he'd live like he was dying. Yeah, I, this fucking I don't know why on my TV every time like I like turn off like Hulu or something mm-hmm. it goes to this fucking um this fucking TV show called like it's like a hillbilly like network type shit, right? And they it's country singers on there all day, bro. Mm. And I don't and you watch it. Yeah, I don't even know who these people be, bro, and I just be listening to it like uh, I'm, I like me, I uh, Shazam the song and shit like. And just well, they do say country is just the rednecks rap, taking a melodies and shit like that. Like, hey man, there's some fire country. There's yeah. some fire shit, and like low key, like if you listen to like the verses, they're low key just rapping. Mm-hmm. They're really just talking their shit in their, but in their fucking over their music and Johnny uh cat uh, Johnny Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash was like. He was talking some gangster shit. Waylon Jennings was talking some gangster shit. Like they were talking about Waylon Jennings was talking about killing and, people. Yeah, and they didn't have no like filter neither at all. Like they yeah. got to talk about whatever they want. Right. Oh God, but yeah, I want to sign some crazy shit. I don't want to do no regular shit. I can see that'd be crazy if you found a LA country artist. Yeah, I want to do just. I want, bro. I want to write music. I want to like produce music. I want to do all that shit. Are you making beats? Nah, hell no. Nah. I'll be having too much going on right now, but if I, if I start making beats, I'm going to be the best producer in L.A., and I don't want to fuck niggas over like that. Have you, <laughs> like, fucked around with it at all? I sit there, and like, with all my producers and make all my beats, you know what I'm saying? So you're pretty hands-on yeah. with the process. Hell yeah. Yeah. I don't even like people sending me beats. Do you ever have an idea for, like, a sample and then send it to your guys? Like, yo, we got to sample this. Every day. Nice. Every day. Have you ever gotten to the point where... You have a record that you love, mm-hmm. 
but the to clear the samples way too much and you're like fuck we can't drop it no nah, we empire empire got it we good well they say you can do anything you want over there. yeah we good talk to me about the empire shit because I, I do think like um it is a very unique situation and i feel like you're one of the artists who's done a great job of navigating empire to your advantage because mm-hmm. i see some people like we talked about earlier like uh g perico like he got on empire left rock nation went to empire and just turned the fuck up mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but i feel like you've been turning the fuck up really the whole time yeah um they give you a lot of resources bro like they open that studio up for you and let you be in there and let you really get your issue off you yeah like you just go hang out in the bay for a week and just yeah sun up to sundown you feel me um Guys and Nima tap in like a motherfucker. They make you feel appreciated. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Gentry. Shout out to Gentry, bro. Um, he just makes sure like I'm getting what the niggas is getting over there. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as the looks, um, define the marketing. Define what you just said, because like you know how like you just mean like like the like the ty- like the top like the, like the, the, the top big guys. dogs. Okay, you feel okay, what okay. I'm saying? Gentry be real hands on, like with Holiday and Tuck, and they all make sure like. That I'm on the same path Type shit Um Any uh More joint projects Mm, Well producers probably Well producers Or you just do a whole project Yeah I do I'm not doing I ain't doing no more projects For nobody How'd the check thing go It, It went smooth It went smooth I think Um If we Like we had some big ass records On there too Yeah for sure Uh If we The Boozy record was on there right Yeah And by the way the um the artwork was fucking crazy. Yeah. That was tight shit. It's time to type for that. But if we would have put more, uh, probably turned up the promotion more and like had it on that end, we probably would have did better than it did. But it was, like I said, it was like a good ass like experience for sure. Yeah. Did a lot off of that shit. Yeah. No, I think people love that project. And I think like uh, there was a lot. I feel like you guys got a lot of love for that project. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. It gave it gave us another platform for sure. Yeah, and at that time, like, yeah, I thought I, I thought that shit did. I mean, shit, man. I I knew a lot of people that were talking about that album. Um, for you, man, like, uh, being out of Inglewood, coming from the family you come from, <coughs> what do you kind of want? your legacy to be in like 20 years when we think of Rucci, when we think of you know the city when we think of just Rucci, overall the greatest ever to come out of inglewood um change inglewood uh give back to the community like a motherfucker always around i just want to be known and loved in, by my city like nipsey mm. do you have any plans of like getting some real estate opening yeah. some businesses hell yeah it's getting there. Yeah. That's why I'm dropping so much. Shout out to two eleven has got his store. I know he's got a new store. Shout out to the Level Up store. If you need yeah, some fly up. shit, go to Level Up. I don't do this, so I need to do this some more often. Level 11, Up. Follow 211 on Instagram. Follow the Level Up store. Go up there. Got everything. And he's got a new one coming at SoFi. Yo, it's kind of <laughs> wild. Like, What is your thoughts on the whole SoFi thing? <laughs> that shit gangsta. It's, I love that first shit. First of all, it's an amazing stadium. It's crazy because like you're you're driving like you know through Inglewood and it's almost like a switch gets hit and it feels like you're in like a different place. Mm-hmm. I shit gangster, bro. I think like I, I think like they asked me about this shit like three years ago. Even the police used to ask me like, "What you gonna do when the stadium come?" Like, nigga, I'm gonna be rich with them people. Nigga, I'm about to give me a house over there. What the fuck, like yeah. type shit. Like, it's just that shit. Just like putting a, another light on us, bro. Like, well, I think with me, like, because right. I'm from Inglewood, you know, I like, I, I, hopefully one day I can perform at a fucking halftime show, you know what I'm Hell saying? Yeah. Like, I just, I, just, it just opened more doors. I'm sure the Rams would have you. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it together. I they'll, gotta, give, they'll give you a jersey. I got to get my Rams on. Hey, listen, one time. they gave the homie Jason Cash a jersey and he's not from Inglewood. Yeah, on me. And so he's I'm, not a Rams fan. But Jason Cash putting on for LA. So he they, is, you know what is, I'm saying? I saw him at the uh, Rams Cardinals game. And I said, ain't you a fucking Raiders fan, bro? <laughs> he ain't hey, turning man. down the opportunity. Yeah, you ain't, yeah, ain't going to turn down the free jersey. I'm a Saints fan. Oh, you're a Saints fan? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, that's random as fuck. Because <laughs> of Reggie, though. 
Reggie Reg- Bush, yeah. No, nah, Reggie got drafted man. to uh, the yeah. Saints. I was a big Reggie Bush fan. And they got fan. the ring. They got the ring, Hurricane Katrina, all that. Like, I was, nah, the Saints were fire. I was just so Sean into Payton, that Drew shit. Brees, Reggie Bush. Yeah, it was just like a thing. Like, you feel me? And then when they had Jimmy Graham. Mm hmm. And then Jimmy Graham left, and then I don't know what the fuck happened. And then it was like, it was still something going through, but I think like even uh, with Thomas getting hurt. Or Michael that Thomas shit. is always hurt. But we, we still got AK. He cold, bro. I cold. Have a career cold. I feel like he signed a cash money or something. He's he signed always, a QC. QC, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. He's always got the chain on. He got the sports agency. Just, yeah, there. I was going to say like, yeah, I don't know. That's fire, though. Yeah, it's super fire. Do you know what happened to uh, Ricky Williams, uh, who got drafted by the Saints back mm-hmm. in the day? Wasn't he signed to No Limit or something like yeah, that? Yeah, but I guess he signed to No Limit and got, like, the worst, like, contract in, like, NFL history. What? <laughs> yeah. He he missed out on, like, a bunch of money because he didn't sign a uh, a guaranteed deal. He did, like, a fully incentive-based deal and got injured and then... And I, he had so many endorsements around that time. Like, I remember that shit, bro. And, and now he's, he started smoking weed and Now shit. he's got the goddamn weed strain. Mm-hmm. But that's crazy how... The like, world's changed. Yeah, like, bro, he was the GOAT, too. And bro, did was, you see Montrez Harrell just got caught in the middle of Kentucky in a 2020 Honda Pilot with five pounds of weed? What? Yes, yesterday. Montrez Harrell, you remember he was on the Clippers and the Lakers? You got to figure it out. I want to know why is he in a Honda Pilot in Kentucky? Because he's trying to figure it out, bro. He, but he's a millionaire. Shit. He got the bag. Obviously, he feel like he ain't got enough. He trying to do it up. Five pounds of weed? Like you got you got a driver? Did he go down? Yeah, he's, he's still facing jail? felony charges for. Uh, he's still in. Yeah, he got free, arrested yesterday. Free bro, free bro. If you got, I mean, if you get pulled over with five pounds of weed in L.A., I feel like it's probably not as bad as. Nah, it. they still if, gonna fuck with. They you. will, but it's not Kentucky. You know, L.A. thirsty though. They trying to figure out why the fuck you like five pounds of weed. Like you know what I'm saying? They thirsty as fuck. Mm. What do you think about, because, um, you know, L.A.'s kind of nationally getting a bad rap right now. Obviously, the homeless shit's happening, but every every week we see a new video of someone getting robbed on Melrose or, mm-hmm. you know, wherever. People, There's a lot of shit. I mean, you saw at Fox Hills Mall, they mm-hmm. uh, they just did that snatch, uh, the, the, the smash and grab yesterday. That's why I feel, I feel like the gun laws is bullshit out here, because it's like, bro, we got to protect ourselves. Like, you feel me? Like, even, like, walking around with... This much jewelry on and shit like this, like it's, it's almost like, like you'll risk the whatever consequences that come with having a gun illegally. So you, yeah, because you'd rather have it than I not got have friends. It. I got I literally got friends like you know wealthy friends, right? Mm-hmm. Who won't even just they don't they don't even go outside with no jewelry on. They go outside on some real regular shit nowadays just because of that type of shit. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like, but it's it's L. A. Bro, like. Our our shit don't stop. Our bullshit ain't gonna never stop, bro. Like, what do you think it was? Cause cause you, cause EDD was bigger here probably than anywhere else. Yeah. So all that shit left. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And they see who still got it left. Mm-hmm. And they gonna leave them with nothing. Yeah. Cause once <laughs> you get that that EDD bread was crazy. That was the beautiful. That was 2020. Huh? That was a moment. There's gonna be a documentary on Netflix in like five years about. I'll drop my own. Dude. The, <laughs> what? I'm like, bruh. There's now that was that was like like some like some unreal shit. Like I've I've seen people with money that never had. I've seen people who never had five thousand dollars. They jump from a twenty dollar bill to twenty thousand dollars. I saw people who didn't own a car end up with a Rolex and a fucking. Hey, we got to stop the interview real quick to tell you about our good folks at Odd Socks. Listen, the most comfortable socks in the entire world. I promise you, are these Odd Socks basics right here. Now, I like the uh, the uh, high joints, the whites or the blacks. We're very inclusive at the Bootleg Head Podcast. Love the blacks and the whites of Odd Socks, of course. Um, but they also got the crazy licenses. They got Ninja Turtles. They got uh, fucking Scarface, Breaking Bad Socks, which I just rewatched. Amazing. And their underwear are the best, man. I was just talking to somebody about how fire the uh, Odd Socks draws are because... The waistband, it don't fold. They're just comfy as hell. So go to oddsocksofficial.com. You see the website. Spell it that same way and use the promo code bootlegkev, all one word together, and you'll get 20% off 
from our presenting sponsors, our family at Odd Socks. It's all that's on my ass and feet, ladies and gentlemen. So go get you some Odd Socks. Let's get back to the interview. Brand new. You know how many cars I rented during that shit? I was probably spending like then there forty, sixty thousand dollars on running cars. Just running? Renting. Just because I don't have no license. Nobody wants me to drive. I'm not mm. the driver. You don't want Ruchi to drive at all. That's how I am. I drive with two feet. That's how I am. Yeah. So and My I was just renting cars, doing stupid shit. I was like that for a while where I was just uh I didn't have a car for a while and I would just rent a car for a month and just pay like whatever. Yeah, I need Let to give me like a black truck or something though. Just get a lease, and then you could write off a big part of the lease because uh, just connect it to your LLC or do your yeah, music. Do shit. something, bro. Cause I can't drive. I don't need you don't have a drive. license. Never had a license. Never went to go get one. Mm. My stepdad, when I was like growing up, he would always like let me just hop just whip. Yeah. So you I gotta just, get your license, man. You're a grown up. Man. I never, bro. I just that shit. Nothing is driving me to get my license. It's a, probably a shitty DMV line. You get probably yeah. set up. But bro, I can't sit in no fucking. You gotta get your fucking license. I gotta go somewhere bro. far nowadays to go to a fucking DMV. Go get the D. Go get your license in Palmdale or something. They know me in Palmdale, bro. I can't be in Palmdale like that. Hey, go to fucking Hammett. Hammett. Temecula. They know me in Temecula. But Temecula's nice. You right. It's a lot of old people out there who love wine. All right. I'm gonna figure it out, bro. But I could, shit, they probably I, feel like I drive all, with two feet. I don't think they don't matter. Don't let me I feel my, like all grown ups need their driver's license. I got my ID. Fuck it. I ID. just got my ID. You just got an ID? So what were you doing before that? Pulling out your birth certificate? No. Just telling them. How the fuck were you going across the border to see your pops? Oh, I had. Uh, like, that was like, you know what I'm saying? I had a birth certificate, but that, even that shit was. I would get double checked. You and, got a passport? No. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I, you know what's crazy, nigga. I I had a pack. I mean, first they gave me I, when I had got an ID, right? They put that my birthday was in like 1999 or some weird shit. Mm-hmm. I had to send back my ID. So when I got a passport the last time, they put that my birthday was in '99 again. So I had to send that shit back, and I still ain't got your passport. Some, yeah, yeah. Good luck. That shit takes forever. Yeah, bro. You know what's so crazy? I, I think it's somebody else with the same name as me and a birthday in, in 99. Because they keep so what doing year were you that born? shit. 94. Okay. Good year. Ill Mad. Year the dog. Doggy style. Year the dog. Yeah, you. That's I mean, why I'm El Pedo. You feel me? Yeah. And uh, shout out to Snoop Dogg. Shout out too. to the artwork. Very, very reminiscent to the doggy style, mm-hmm. dog father, you mm-hmm. know, era of Snoop. Yeah, that's all from that, bro. All from Snoop, bro. Straight up. That's crazy. Everybody like don't understand like, like even like the whole dog shit. How he carried that shit. Like he made people like dogs. Like just dogs. You think people didn't like dogs? I don't know, bro. They feel like they've always been adored. Homeward Bound, Dalmatians and shit. Hundred and one Dalmatians. Yeah, but not no fucking Dobermans and pit bulls and shit like that. Probably, probably the pit bull Doberman thing. For yeah, because sure. when Snoop Dogg was a Doberman and they turned into Snoop. And yeah, he made the like the hood dogs look tight. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying people was into getting. The other Do you have stuff. dogs? <laughs> I've had dogs all my life. Um, I just had a dog. I moved to a new apartment. Can take the dog. He was there for a little bit, but he can. It's really my little brother dog and we be on the go so much we had to just give him to our cousin type of shit. Yeah, you gotta dog's like a kid, man. Yeah, you really don't know that until you get one though. You know, there's a lot of these rappers running around out here with these fucking exotic Frenchies and they treat them like fucking accessories and not like animals. Yeah, so I don't even I don't even like I probably when I get older I for sure gonna get some dogs again. But like Yeah, once you get the crib, maybe you get yeah, some. Yeah, my kids. house growing up I had like for sure I had a kennel in my backyard. If you go look at my old videos, my stepfather built a kennel in my backyard. We had like four different, four or five different dogs, like a bull mastiff. It's a big dog. Um, we had like actually three bull mastiffs, but two of them were mixed with the pit, and we had a pit and a Rottweiler. Shit. Which was the in house, like the house dog. Be inside. Yeah. No one's coming to your house to fuck around. Yeah. So if we, but I used to get like go outside, and I used to go through it with dogs, bro. Like my dog Rottweiler, like I get outside. And they had all jumped the Rottweiler. Like I'm talking about 
eating at him like he, you feel me? The inside dog would get beat up by the outside dog. Yeah, bro. Because they were jealous, bro. And one time I stuck my hand in that shit, bro. You get bit? Rottweiler bit me. He didn't bite them. He bit me, and my shit started blushing good everywhere. Like, fuck, bro. That shit a headache, bro. And it was a lot of dogs, bro. I don't know how my stepdad still keep up with him though. I just have two tiny dogs. Yeah, I have a Pomeranian and a Frenchie. <laughs> they're small. They're fucking. You know, they're just they're they. I mean, they're gay. That's dogs. what I'm saying. I think when I'm, <laughs> I have like the dogs of a gay man. Like my dogs aren't they actually for the good too. They for the good too. They might, but my dogs aren't actually gay. But I feel like they're like if I was uh, <laughs> if someone saw me walking my two dogs, they'd probably be like, "Yo, Boo, like Kev, is he? Does, oh, I just saying. Is he uh, playing on the other side? Yeah, yeah. I got a fucking <laughs> furry little fucking Pomeranian fucking dog, bro. Like, but see, like I think when I like because I'm like I said, I be on the go, bro. Like I got an apartment, but I don't. I ain't get it to like really. I just. I need somewhere to stay. You feel me? Would bro? you ever live anywhere else but besides LA? Yeah, hell yeah. I I really want to go to South. Mm. For sure. Go to go to fucking Atlanta. Houston. Or Houston. Houston's amazing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, great strip clubs. Mm-hmm. And the Mexican food's still good. Mm-hmm. Food out there is amazing. The food's amazing. And yeah. it's a great city. Good I mean, bad abortion laws, good gun laws though. But I'm I wanna like when I get it together, give me a little Get a house in Vegas, like just Ve- I was gonna say, Vegas is the at, move. You know what's so crazy though? Close. AZ Mansions. I don't know a lot of states that's fucking with AZ Mansions, bro. Or AZ women. Listen, that's a whole nother story. That's like, I, I promise you, I've never like been to AZ and not got no pussy, low key. Good for you. Yeah, I'm sure you've probably uh, fucked women I know out there. You ever been to Jaguars? <laughs> nah. Oh. And then you haven't been there Every time I know But like that's what I'm saying I don't be going places And chilling I be on the go You just be falling into draws I be like on tour or something Like and you feel me Or I gotta do a show out there And I'm there for A night and a half Like you feel me That's it You feel me But like I said I'm I'm getting older bro Like so I'm really feeling You know A lot of people are um, Start taking my time Getting cribs in Vegas Because there's no state tax It's cheap as fuck out there It's cheap and You don't have to pay no taxes that's hard as a motherfucker, Because in Cali, the uh, state tax is pretty serious, man. But that weather ain't no... Bro, why is it so hot in fucking Palm Desert? It's hot. Nigga, we just went to El Centro two nights ago. It was... You were in El Centro? I had a show out there. Oh, shit. Random as fuck, huh? MC Magic has an artist named J-Rocks that he signed that's from El Centro. Shout out to her. Nice lady. But yeah, El Centro is like an Air Force town, right? Bro, I don't know what they got it the is, fucking Air bro. Force base it's right there. By the border too. It's like uh, it's on your way from if you were to drive from San Diego to Phoenix, you hit El Centro. Right by Mexicali. By Mexicali. Yeah, but like I said, like hot. I, I didn't have a look. I didn't even have a lot of like people there. Like it was a good show, but it wasn't like sold out or nothing. Right. right? But to see the motherfuckers that's from El Centro that like me, it was like, what the fuck? Like y'all don't have nobody out here to like, huh? Like. Well, Central's uh, in the middle of nowhere. It's like Blythe. Blythe. Damn. You know what's crazy is when I was like really heavy into like selling drugs, Blythe was, I used to pick up work in Blythe. Obviously marijuana. Not talking about anything crazy. But like Blythe is a little, it's very like a. The population is small. My uh, One of my high school teachers. Uh grew up in Blythe and she used to always just tell us like every time I'm so yeah. happy to be here because where I'm from it's terrible it's like I see the same 10 people every day I stop at the same gas station to piss every time I'm driving to Phoenix and the last two times I've pissed at this gas station it's in the same parking lot as the Denny's there's been a crackhead smoking crack in the bathroom in Blythe <laughs> yeah. imagine being a crackhead in Blythe that's probably a hard place to, to be a crackhead at. fucking 120 degrees Like a homeless crackhead In Blythe Smoking crack Like, I don't like if I'm gonna be A homeless mix. crackhead I'm just I'm getting to LA somehow Or I'm gonna go to Portland If I was a homeless crackhead I'm going to jail Portland might be nice I'm going to jail Can you get crack in jail though? Figure it out You already doing crack You can do with some other shit mm, You get free re, Free rent in jail <coughs> I don't know man Some of these homeless motherfuckers Is living nice in these tents bruh These tents are serious Little contraptions Bro tell me about it bro 
I, I literally got family members. Like, bro, like, you don't want to. Staying in the tents? I got a family member that told me that some crazy shit. Like, I'm like, you don't want an apartment or nothing? He said, nah, I got two cars. What? He's like, yeah, this tent ain't shit. Like, So he, he lives in the tent but has two cars? Mm-hmm. Why does he just live in the car? Probably do that too. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot but of people downtown. You know, parking. Well, there's a lot of people who. Ch- <laughs> well, there's a lot of people who choose to be homeless. <clears throat> no, for real. I had a little cousin like that too. Like, he would choose like like when we was growing up, he would choose like to like not go home and sleep in the alley, and I never got it. Nobody ever understood it. Imagine like in the middle of the pandemic, you could go live on the beach in Venice. Mm-hmm. You go to Venice Beach and live rent free on the beach. And they won't fuck with you. Now, they did clean it up. Like, in the last 90 days, it's gotten cleaned up. But for like a year and a half, Venice Beach, I don't know if you went during yeah, the I pandemic. Was, I don't even think I went. That's crazy. Bro, it was fucked. Venice Beach was like Skid Row on the water. It was wild. Look, but imagine you, if you're a home. Like, like I said, viral. what's the homeless crackhead in Blythe doing when you can go get free beachfront property two hours up the fucking freeway, man? Yeah, I feel that. Like, I'm going to Venice Beach to be homeless. Fuck yeah. Blythe, bruh. Crack's fuck, the same price in... Fuck bro. being homeless, bro. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. And fuck crack. Crack's not probably the... Crack is whack. It's probably not the drug to participate in. Even though I I do have my... Uh, hey, who said that crack is whack? Uh, sounds like some 90s shit. It was like a... No, it was like a... A, a commercial? Like, no, a, like one of the like... Because like the first lady who was... Who was the first lady at that time? It was like... Oh, it was Nancy was, Reagan. Yeah, she said yeah. crack is whack on like... On yeah, the, the war on drugs uh, shit. In the press yeah, conference yeah, yeah. type shit. Fuck the war on drugs. <laughs> They've been losing that shit for 30 years. You watch uh, Snowfall? Like a motherfucker. Great show. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, great show. I had Freeway Rick Ross up here. And he's a talker. The real one? The real I got, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not the fake one. The real one? Do you know if there's a fake Freeway Rick Ross running around doing interviews? <laughs> nah, I just said the real one because he always say the real one. I'm the real one. Yeah, he's got to let 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 the whole Rick Ross thing go, man. Yeah, Rose. There's more money to get. He should be. He sh- he should have Rose, bro. He should have got out of jail, and been like, "Yo, man, I love how you're keeping my name alive. Mm-hmm. Let me narrate an album." People don't think like that, bro. People want everything, everything, everything. Cause Rose living. You see his house. Who didn't? You see that he got that house and then he rented it. They, um, the movie, the Coming to America sequel mm-hmm. that was on Prime, I think. Mm-hmm. I seen that shit. They rented his house. Oh, for real? For like one and a half million dollars to shoot the fuck. And he paid like, I don't know what he paid for that house, but if it was close to one and a half, it was like whatever they paid him to rent the crib was close to what he paid for the house, which really, now that I'm thinking about it and I'm on shrooms. It's got me thinking how much I just paid for my house in Burbank and my stomach hurts now because his house in Atlanta is like a. You got a house in Burbank? Yeah, I just bought a house in Burbank. Congratulations, bro. That's that's big. Buying a house in L.A.? Yeah, it was expensive, man. It definitely wasn't fucking. Wasn't cheap. You did that. Put my head down and got to it. That's a bar right there. Got to it, man. Uh, all right, so the project's out. Mm-hmm. What else is coming from you? Um, tour, uh, merch. I'm about to get into my merch shit like a motherfucker, bro. I ain't never done no real like. Yeah, you gotta, bro. That's just the whole fucking revenue stream. Drop once, a, drop no gear routine. once a month. Yeah, so I'm finna really get locked in with that. Um, I got some dope ass designers. Drop a uh, bong, bro. Like I said, we finna get into all that, bro. Mm. Like, and the thing is, like I. Like, I've been doing, like, little shit. Like, I used to go to fucking meetings all the time with the Roar Glass Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, we was, like, trying to do something, but I never really had the platform and the shit to do it. Now you do. Yeah, so, like, I'm about to really get touch base with a Because you're the only rapper pushing bong culture, man. Yeah. Everybody else is on Backwoods. I fucking hate Backwoods. Yeah, I fucking hate all that shit, bro. Backwoods to me is, like... Swisher. I smoke Swishers. I'm not mad at a blunt. I think we talked about it because the the blunt life is still very uh shout out to Swisher, man. Alive. We got a partnership coming I, soon. Bro, I love blunts. Love y'all a didn't blunt. Know, now y'all know. I do the blunt or just the papers, the pre-roll, the cone, you stuff your weed in, 
Because I'm not good at rolling, so it's got to be kind of done for me. Yeah. Well, shit, I smoke Swishers. The bong life. And Swishers. Because mm-hmm. they cut that check. Mm-hmm. Shout out to them. <laughs> hey, Swishers, sponsor the fucking podcast. <laughs> yeah. well, I have a whole table full of fucking Swishers. What? Swisher game. Bro. Swisher game. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good shit. Um, just, uh, I want to. I actually want to just drop a lot more music, but I do want to take time to myself, like, cause I ain't never did that, bro. Go on like, vacation, man. Yeah, I want to do something like you go to Hawaii. Me? Just me and my little dude or something. You feel me, my son? Yeah. Type take shit. him to Hawaii and get yeah. your fucking driver's license. You're a fucking adult, bro. <laughs> and I'm gonna get my. Yeah, there's no excuse. No, last time he told me to get my ID. Just get something. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna get you my... were born in 1994. You're bro, not, listen. Bro, bro, you're knocking on 30. Bro, the, 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 the life I live, I can't, I don't know what, I can't explain it. But I'm going to get it, though. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get my driver's license. Shout out to Bulev Kid. Yeah, you got to get the I'm going to do it for you, bro. There's just certain shit in life you got to get. Because what are you, 28? Yeah, you're 28, bro. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's time, man. Yeah, that's what I'm trying, bro. I'm, bro. <laughs> I'm bro. There's bro. I'm trying a, there's to get a my fucking life DMV together. in Glendale. It's full of Armenians. I'm sure. Shout out to the Armenian homie, my guy Esta here. You just make an appointment online. You pull up. You handle it. You go home, and you you're. You know what's crazy? I don't think I'm gonna pass the test. You probably won't. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I'm gonna pass the you test. You gotta study, bro. bro. That's the thing, bro. See, you, it's, so now, now we've gotten to the root of the problem. Yeah, you don't want to study. Yeah, like what the fuck, nigga? I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta pass the test. Oh, listen, these motherfuckers can barely drive, bro. And the people who got licenses can't drive, bro. So, yeah, but you gotta get a lot. You drive with two feet for real? How about I just, I'm gonna get a driver? Fuck a driver's license. I mean, that's a. Good, I mean, but that's also probably an unnecessary expense at this point in your career. For sure. You know how much money I spent on Uber? What the fuck? Oh my god! Get your license, stop but I'm not drive. gonna want to drive. Still, like, but, but stop driving with two feet because you're not twelve. Nigga, that's like the go kart shit. Yeah, this isn't Ridge Racer at the arcade, bro. Bro, listen, I'm gonna get it together one day. Yeah, don't double foot the fucking <laughs> gas. You gotta just one foot left to right. Get a fucking Tesla. It'll drive itself. You just gotta make sure it don't crash. I f- I I be driving Teslas all the time and fuck up the brakes because I you know. It really like stops the car when you got your. When you break it, but when you got your feet on both pedals at once. Oh my god! Yeah, you really. Hey, shout out to my guy Ruchi, man. He got the driving habits of a fourteen year old. <laughs> I'm still, man. I'm doing it, man. He's doing it. He's got new music coming. The uh, new project is out. Tour, all type of good shit, man. Shout out, Bullet Kev, gang, gang. There it is.